And this leads to number two. What does it mean to become all things to all people? Here's what I wrote down. I adapt my non-sinful patterns to help people far from God see me as like them so that I might ultimately help them know and enjoy the forgiveness that comes with a more personal relationship with Christ. I do just what Paul said. I do all things for the sake of the gospel. We do all things for the sake of the gospel so that we might save some. What should you do? You shouldn't violate your conscience. That means sometimes it doesn't, it's not just about church stuff. Perhaps you shouldn't go to the office Halloween party because of the stuff that's going to be there that you know that's going to hurt my conscience to be around it. Maybe there's stuff happening at your kid's school that you need to be like, he's not, he's not going that day because I know what they're doing and I don't want him to participate in that thing. Maybe you shouldn't watch horror movies. Maybe your whole family watches them and you shouldn't because it freaks you out and you're scared all night and you don't want that. Why give the devil that opportunity to just show you evil pictures? Here's what Paul says, Romans 14, we're gonna end here. So whatever you believe about these things, keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the one who does not condemn himself by what he approves. What he means there is, if you've already, if you and Jesus are good with what you think about this, don't keep wobbling back and forth. Like just pick one and do it unto Jesus. He loves it. But whoever has doubts is condemned if they eat because their eating is not from faith and everything that does not come from faith is sin. This is a real interesting parallel. If you want to go read Romans 14 and stick in Halloween every time it says meat sacrificed to idols. Paul is telling them, hey guys, meat is not, meat sacrificed to idols. It's not, it doesn't belong to those demons. So you can just eat it. But if someone is freaking out, don't eat in front of them because they're going to think that's bad. But you get to follow your own conscience and you get to help them follow theirs. Avoid sin, reduce the distance in your life. This is why we try to reach all people through things like big days. So here's my challenge to you. There, there is real hard darkness that people are in right now, like in this season. And can I tell you, dude, it's not like about ghouls and crypts. It's about depression. It's about spiraling downward anger. It's about people feeling so lost and lonely that they just want to get rid of themselves. That's real darkness, and it's really there. And you and I have the opportunity. We can shine our light. We can let it out in ways that make sense to people so that we can draw near them and not hide from them when they, maybe they most need us right at that particular moment. Let's create lifestyles where we are tending to draw near instead of draw back. How do you love somebody that thinks differently than you? Here's a great way. You talk great about them, and you say, I admire their integrity. Even though they don't agree with me about Halloween, I know that they're thinking that unto Jesus, and so I bless them for it. But as for you, as your pastor, I just want to shape this value. Use everything you can to bring the light of Jesus into people's lives, and parse scripture rightly and avoid sin. That's all.